person from history once said, truly creative works are never finished. They are abandoned. And since we didn't finish the show, it's time to abandon it. Abandon it before it turns wild. And who better for the job than a man of wild abandon and the star of the Red Green Show and my uncle, because he's my, he's my father's brother. That's what makes him my uncle. Here he is, Mr. Red Green. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Harold. Not the best introduction I've ever heard in my life, but uh, uncles can't be choosers. <laughs> sorry, Uncle Red. I'm sorry. Well, no more than I am, Harold. Uh, by the way, Harold here is uh, not only my nephew, he's also my producer and my director. Yeah, and I also have control of this video effective panel here. Look at this. I can do things like that, and it gives the show a look. I like to think everything should have a look. Uh, you get looks everywhere you go, don't you, Harold? Well, that's my job. Looks, angles, visuals. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah, we got a great show for you tonight. We got a lot of film clips, we got a lot of special guests, and uh, I have a great story about Moose Thompson and Elvis. Oh, why don't we just get right on with, like, the, the video clips and, of course, the guests? Well, what about the uh, Moose Thompson and Elvis story? Oh, well, you know, well, let's save the best for last. If there's time. certain things you should never do like don't eat things that you find on your shoe don't have a nap in the middle of the road and don't ever lick a toad don't lick a toad don't lick it you'd be better off to kick it or better still just leave it alone it wasn't bothering you no. don't lick a toad don't lick it just say no to toads <laughs> Well, I guess you can tell this is kind of a special day. Uh, you know, once in a while I do like to uh, spend some time with, uh, with the youngsters, and this is something I think more and more adults uh, can do, uh, or even parents. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're a parent and you do have a child, and it's not like Harold, uh, you might want to spend some of your valuable time with the child pays off in spades. Uh, or if a kid down the street, you know, or if you get involved with the Big Brothers, highly recommend that. And uh, I'm spending some time today uh, with uh, Max. Max, and, uh, <laughs> Max has brought a, a brought an airplane here. This is uh, this is Max's own uh, model model plane. Do you want to? No, no, no. Actually, you better not touch that. Um, <laughs> what you can do, Max? We're going to fly this plane today. Um, this is well. This is kind of fun for me too. I can tell you. Uh, Max, why don't you you, un you untangle a string and. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work on the plane. Uh, get all, all the junk. He's got the whole kit here. He really has. A, he's got the whole thing all set up. <coughs> you know, uh, I never had one of these. Uh, when I was a kid, I always wanted one. Uh, but of course, uh, now my dad, he, he wouldn't he wouldn't spend that that, that bit of time, and uh, so it, it didn't pay off for him. You know, and I think in a way that and here I am spending time with a with a young fella, and look what's happening for me. I'm getting to finally uh, get the thing going with the model plane, which I always wanted as a kid and never get to get to get in this. Uh, <laughs> so you see how it works out. So, <laughs> well, hurry up, Max. Uh, I haven't got all day here. And, uh, and they, they enjoy it, too. It's not just, it's not just, it's not just a pleasure. I'm going to get my glove. Uh, uh, I don't have my glove, so uh, I've got the handyman's uh, secret weapon here, which we call an AG alternate glove. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, wrap this around what's going to be the cut. <laughs> and then I'll use this to uh, actually start the... How are, you, how are you doing there? No, 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 you're doing all wrong. 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 Come on over here. <laughs> start here. And you, you, you untie them. There, 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 there. That's it. <clears throat> they like the guidance. You know, it's not that they just want to just sit back and do it any old which way, because uh, this is uh, how they learn. <laughs> This week uh, in the Handyman Corner, uh, I'm going to show you how to get uh, more and more uses out of your uh, electric drill. You know, uh, a lot of people ask me, Red, they say, uh, if I only uh, can afford to buy one power tool, what should I buy? Well, now that they've made uh, flamethrowers illegal, <laughs> I would have to recommend uh, the power electric drill. 
First of all, you can use it uh, for drilling. You can also use it uh, to cool down the workshop. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, hang that from the ceiling with uh, the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> Now, they try to sell you one of those uh, fancy automatic power screw driving uh, deals, and they, they cost uh, anywhere up to seven or eight million dollars. Well, all you need to do is to get the bit, which is about $1.49, and just put it into your normal uh, drill, and uh, it just works just absolutely fine. <laughs> well, you get the idea. <laughs> Now, you know, they try to sell you a bunch of attachments for your drill, but uh, the truth is the attachments really don't make that much difference. Uh, the real reason that the drill works is through you horsing down on her and really putting some torsion on it. Uh, you can cut a hole with a, anything from a toothbrush to a car keys if you, if you get enough juice on her, you know. So, uh, for example, they'll sell you a real expensive uh, saw blade that goes on your drill. Well, that's really not necessary. Uh, I'll show you right here how you can... Uh, you can cut a perfectly good line uh, just using your ordinary drill with a, with a drill bit in it. You know. You gotta prepare to give it a little more time uh, this way, but uh, you're saving upwards of five dollars. <laughs> now here's uh, here's something that you wouldn't ordinarily think to use a drill for, and this is what I'm I'm trying to say is that you're only limited by your own imagination. And you can deal with that as you may. But here's a situation where you take two wires that you would want to strand together, make some sort of a braiding pattern, just twist them together, make a neater look uh, for whatever it is you're maybe rewiring your stove or whatever. Uh, what you do is you put both ends of, of the wire in, uh, in there and you take your two strands and uh, you, you turn on the drill uh, from a remote setting and then just slowly uh, walk towards while it, while it winds in. And it's, it's, it's a heck of a rig and it's not something that you'd ordinarily think of with a drill. So why don't we just give this a, give this a try. Uh, all right, boys, uh, you want to hit the power there? There we go. Look at that. <laughs> all right, you want to kill that? So uh, if you are thinking of buying a power tool, I'd recommend you go out and get yourself a new drill. Looks like I'm going to have to. <laughs> anyway, so until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> we'll be right back with uh, more fun in the forest, more film clips, and more about Moose and Elvis. Treat me like a fool. <laughs> or what, eh? <laughs> This is, <clears throat> this is exciting, and but it's very, very dangerous. Well, maybe it's not that dangerous. Let's wait for that pain to go down a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Rabbits grow a warm winter coat. The foxes, too, grow a thick winter coat, as do the minks and the raccoons. But we cannot grow a thick coat, so we just kill them and take theirs. <laughs> okay, now I was telling you about uh, Moose Thompson and Elvis. He, um, Moose was down at the supermarket, and uh, he told everybody that he saw the ghost of Elvis in the Chinese food section. But nobody <laughs> believed him. And then he remembered that it wasn't the Chinese food section, it was in the delicatessen. And suddenly the story had an eerie ring of truth to it. Uncle Red, how come you can't talk about, like, Guns N' Roses or New Kids in the Block, you know? Something that our younger viewers might like, not just old people, you know? It's just a thought. Think about that. What are you talking about, Harold? Well, these stories are really good, just that nobody likes them. Maybe we should put a music video in here, you know, something, something with some rap. All right, give me your knuckles. Oh, I mean, like, like Paula Abdul, you know? She's really good. Maybe people would like to hear her rather than about Moose Thompson's hallucinations. People under 80 would rather hear that, I think. No, this wasn't a hallucination, uh, Harold. I mean, Elvis could not be a hallucination, okay? Oh, yeah, you don't know. Maybe something like this happened. 
You just cut me off, bro. No. It was a hallucination. I hear the sizzle of bacon on the engine block. I see a handful of hash browns lying in my sock. I watch a stack of pancakes go rolling down the dock. Breakfast is hell when the stove blows up. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> what we have to do now is uh, adjust the motor. <laughs> Max, give me the fuel. Give me the fuel. It's in the... Get the fuel. No, 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 no. That's... that's my, no. All right. <laughs> oh, Uncle Red, great, excellent. This is the part of the show that you like best. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, so long, and uh, thanks for watching. Oh, no, 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 no. Uncle Red, I meant like mail call. Part where we answer viewer mail? I got a letter right here. It's hard to read, though. It's like on colored paper and crayon. <laughs> You're awesome. I really like your show. I have all of them on tape. I've watched every one of them 50 tires. Times, 50 times, he's, uh -huh. I think you are very wisp. Wise, he thinks you're very wise, Uncle Red. Um, I'm your biggest far. What's a far? Well, that would be, be a fan, biggest fan. Looks like far. Well, it'll be fan, let me see. A lot of times small, the N looks like a small R. Yeah, that's a capital R. That's the biggest far. All right. Yeah, well, okay, I've got a far. That's nice. I've got fans. A far is kind of a kind of a nice change. Yeah. It says, I want to start a far club. Oh. I think he means a fan club there, Harold. I thought a far club would be nice since you probably already have a fan club. <laughs> to start the far club, I will need your approval. Is that okay with you? Signed, X. Well, uh, yeah. Sure. I mean, Harold, every star dreams of having their own fire club, don't they? Sure. <laughs> How far does he want this fire club to go, do you think? Probably pretty far. It's a fire club. <laughs> far the better, if you have me. <laughs> okay, sure. Whoever you are, go ahead. Start the Red Green Fire Club. Sans here he wants to call it the Red Groin Fire Club. It's even better. Okay, the Red Groin Fire Club. Perfect. If any of you viewers at home want to become a member of that beautiful sounding club, uh, Carol, why don't you just hold up the return address and get directly in touch with this guy? Well, they didn't send one. Just like a chewed up wad of gum and a rock and a plastic bag, Uncle Red. <laughs> it's quite a country you got here, Harold. You gotta have a license to buy a gun, but they'll sell anybody a stamp. <laughs> what kind of gum is it? Double bubble or something. Well, I'll have that. You have the rock. Oh, okay. <laughs> We, uh, we do get uh, winter in this country, and uh, Bill and I think that uh, well, one of the keys to uh, make the best of winter is to get out and enjoy it and actually take activities and, and just do them, you know? Because when you get going on, here he is uh, coming down on a sled, and, uh, you know, he's having so darn much fun that uh, he really doesn't notice the cold or the, or the any kind of... There's no snow. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, everything. So that's all part of the fun, isn't it? Uh, yeah, he's, he looks all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we want to show you today uh, how you can have some fun uh, with the winter. And uh, it doesn't matter if you don't have any money. You don't have to join an expensive ski club or any any such thing as that. Uh, uh, and it helps if you can't read. But even if you have just a cardboard box, I, I believe this is from a dryer or a washer or uh, it might have just been the donuts that we got. And then into the box, you see, and then that... Uh, <laughs> well, that wasn't that. No, you know, you don't want to go down on... You want to go down uh, standing upright in, in, in the thing, and uh, Bill will show you. This is a lot of fun, because you really can't see what you're going to hit. You know? uh, well, that, I don't think that was Bill's top end, was it? But, yeah, yeah. Come on, Bill, come on. Up you go, up you go, up you go. There he is. <laughs> Well, we jam down there and flip them over, and away you go. Well, God, say it. <laughs> and here's another inexpensive uh, slide you can use. Uh, this is a garbage can lid, uh, and you know they're, they're the plastic propy pop 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 and that skids on. And this is something I did <laughs> just to you know add another wrinkle. I thought I'd put them right into the can. <laughs> You know, it's uh, really where Bill belongs most of the time, anyhow, you know. And then this would make it more exciting for him, kind of like uh, Space Mountain at Disney World, you know. Oh, he's having a good time. And, uh, golly, that'd make you dizzy, wouldn't it? I said, Bill, uh, when you finish, if you're okay, just give us the wave, you know. And uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, he's fine.
It is winter. When people wave to you from the warmth of their cars or shout hello as they hurry by with their packages. But you can't answer because your tongue is frozen to your sleigh. This is a time in the show where we uh, just take a minute out from the uh, entertainment and the pleasantries and, and have a chance just to be sort of bored out of our minds. Harold? <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to talk about your first date. Okay, many of you, unlike me, have never been out on a real date with a girl. <laughs> okay, um, first things first, okay? Don't, do not try and kiss her in the hallway with her parents there. Don't. Second, <laughs> never make fun of people who play lotteries until you've ascertained if indeed uh, she plays lotteries. And the worst, whoever thought this could have happened, but it's horrible. Maybe her family makes her living selling lottery tickets. <laughs> and, and when you get out to the car and her foot's not in, inside the car, don't slam the door. Don't do that. Like, don't, like, maybe you think it's a seatbelt or something, you keep slamming it or something. It's not. Don't. It's a leg. It smarts, according to people who've been there. And, and next, when, um, you go out to dinner and say, say you don't have enough money to cover the bill, okay? Don't start crying. Don't. It doesn't help. Just be really cash and cool about it, right? Just say, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna have gravy on my fries. <laughs> do that, right? You're out of the situation. Schleck, right? Okay, then, you know what else you don't do? Don't go to a German art film and do not read the subtitles to her until she looks at you real sweet like and goes, would you shut up? <laughs> don't do that. And, and then finally, when you're going home and, and, and you're kissing her goodnight and she doesn't want to, don't ask her why. <laughs> Believe me, it hurts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> don't go away. We got the end of the Moose and Elvis story coming up. Inquiring minds don't care. <laughs> I'm in the field there, Max. The field. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you know, you spend a little time with these kids, and uh, before you know it, uh, you got to push down on that while you're turning it. Can't you read? <laughs> push down. No, no. Push down harder while you're turning it. Turn that and push down. Push down and turn that. Turn, turn, push, yeah, push, push, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't knock it over. You do it all. You do it. I can, when well, you do it, you do it. Okay, careful, careful. Okay, 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 that's enough. All right, all right, all right. All right. Put, the on, put, the on, put the lid on it, put the lid on it, put the lid on it. I'm here today with a man who is living his dream. Uh, by day, he delivers food for people, and uh, on the weekend, uh, he drives his monster truck around uh, crushing cars. Uh, my good buddy, Dougie Franklin. Thank you, Red. As the sign says, I, I love this truck and I love the work I do in it. You should see the look on some of these people's faces when they see this this vehicle coming across their front lawn. Oh, it's a wonderful <laughs> feeling. And being so high up, too, they don't even have to come downstairs for their dinner. I can just slip it right through the second uh, story window to them. It's a convenient <laughs> thing, but you know, Red, some of these people, they got nothing. They got no food, they got nothing. It's, it, there's something wrong with society when some people have so much and other people have so little. I mean, you know, it's like we got our priorities screwed up somewhere along the way. Oh, that is so true, Dougie. Yeah, yeah. yeah so what, would a, what would a truck like this cost? <clears throat> uh, about 86,000, uh, <laughs> $86,000. That's fully loaded, though. Yeah. I, I used to have a Honda Civic. Uh, we took her to uh, that tractor and truck paw thing, but uh, we, we didn't fare very well at all, so I had to get rid of her. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Dougie, there is uh, a lot more to this sport than just uh, lining up in front of a bunch of old cars and then uh, flying through the air and then uh, coming down and crushing them. No. No, that's the that summer up in a nutshell, I think, what the sport's all about. But, you know, if I might just get serious for... Just a second, uh, Red. I'd like to talk to you kids at home. You kids at home have got uh, an oversized truck uh, with humongo tires like this. You don't want to be trying the stuff that we do. You, 
leave it to the professionals. Because you can get into like uh, uh, things that could happen to your head, and uh, you can deal with some head injuries. Uh, and, and, and your head could get uh, you can you can hurt uh, heads. Would get injured very bad. Did I say that? I think I did. That. You know, I, I was just, while you were speaking there, I was just wondering if maybe a seatbelt might be a good idea in a sport like oh, this. Oh, you, yeah, you bet your bottom dollar on that. Now, I have a seatbelt, but it's crawled and snuck back here into the crack of this seat here, and, and, <laughs> and I can't get at it. it it's been, been welded into, into place. Oh. I can't get at it, but, you know, it's a safe, it is a safe sport, Red. I mean, nobody is going to get hurt. No. Unless, of course, they got their face staring up the barrel of my exhaust when I fire this baby up. Well, that set you free. I'll tell you, there's a story behind that one. Yeah. Well, maybe, 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 maybe some other time, huh? huh? I never knew two pays cost so much money, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> well, that's Dougie Franklin, a man who's combined his hobby and his work into one huge, great, big, gigantic truck here. Or that they were flammable, too, that sucker. Right off. He was a cue ball. He was a cue ball. <laughs> Unbelievable. This, you know, come in looked like Tom Selleck, and he went out looking like Kojak. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, uh, after Moose Thompson had seen the ghost of Elvis, it kind of changed his personality. Or, I, I should say, it, it got him a personality. <laughs> Put uh, rhinestones all over his plaid shirt and his hunting vest and, and his tent. <laughs> and he went around saying, well, thank you very much, you know. And, uh, and he bought his mother a motor home and called it Greaseland. <laughs> No, no, we try to be tolerant of people for a couple of minutes or so, but I mean, it got to the point where he was really getting on our nerves, uh, so we knocked him down, stepped on his face, and slandered his name all over the place. <laughs> and now he thinks he's Mama Cass. <laughs> anyway, uh, if my wife is watching, I'm going to be coming straight home, and uh, I've decided not to put my hair into a ducktail because I, <clears throat> I couldn't get the duck to go for it. <laughs> anyway, uh, on behalf of myself uh, and... Harold. Yeah, close enough. And the rest of us up at the lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> yeah, I think you should. All right, let her go. Yeah, that's it. Now that's fine at its best, isn't it? We take this little extra time, and uh, the youngsters uh, get to have some fun. And uh, is it okay? Yeah. I'll we got some duct tape in the van here and whatever. <laughs> Golly, I'm thirsty. <sighs> Clean that up, will you, Max? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha!